Hello, Jim here. I get a lot of questions from both members and subscribers on how I pick the companies that I pick. How do I look at fundamentals? How do I look at technicals? And how do I make a decision if it's at a good price? You might be able to find a really good company, but is it at a good price? Today, I want to talk about that. And in the process, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite companies and one of my favorite ETFs and how potentially that can be great holds for the long term. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy what I have for you. Okay, let's jump right in. I primarily like to use two tools to help me with determining if it's a good company as well as if it's at a good price. Those tools are Seeking Alpha and Bar Charts. I'm going to share with you a little bit about each today. As I explore and look at Applied Materials, it's a company that I'm currently trading on. I have a vertical put credit spread that expires on Friday that I'm not sure I may manage it or I may let it expire depending on what happens. It is not too far outside the money. It's about 6 or $7 outside the money. So why do I like Seeking Alpha so much? It just shows so much information that's very easy to gauge and find. So even on this first page where I'm looking at applied materials, I can see that SA analysts are giving it a buy rating, Wall Street's giving it a buy rating, and in quant, which kind of measures the quality of earnings, are they updating or changing their earnings in a negative way? So a strong quant means they're typically meeting earnings and then doing a little bit better typically. So, and then I can also look at the uh, basic chart. I can do more aggressive charting or more complex charting to the right. You can see there's also a tab for charting. But a lot of times I like to, I like to go out and look 10 years. What has what this stock or company been doing for 10 years? And you can see applied materials typically has been moving higher over the last 10 years. It, it started back in the low 30s, got down to 20 or 30, and then has been moving up steadily. Now, with any stock, you're going to get some pretty big moves at different times. It could be market corrections. It could be earnings. It could be any number of factors. Uh, sometimes the sector kind of goes in and out, meaning there's some environmental or economic issues that might impact the company. So it's never kind of a straight up. It's usually, you know, it reaches higher highs and higher lows. And that's what's happened with them. They've kind of have gone along and just have reached higher highs, you know, a higher low and then higher, higher highs and then another higher low, which is something I really like to see. Then I also like to look at earnings per share in PE. So they are making $8.53 and their forward PE is 21.51. So I, you know, not a lot of times, especially with growth companies, you'll see it, PEs at 30, 40, 50. And what I like to do next is, and I'll talk a little bit more about the PE when we talk about valuation, but the next thing I typically like to do is look at earnings. And then I like to get a, I like how they do a nice visual representation of earnings. And you can see they're, they're increasing every quarter not by a huge amount, but by a pretty pretty good amount. And it seems to be accelerating. And that's what I like to see. I also like to see that they're beating earnings. So the blue line is actual. And then the, the darker gray is, you know, what the estimate was. So they've pretty much beaten earnings every quarter going back uh, towards the end of 2023. So I do like to see that. I can also see when is next earnings. They do have earnings coming up on 11 14 so I want to be careful when I'm trading vertical put credit spreads or cash secured puts or even covered calls to be careful with that date. I prefer to stay away from um, that day. That's why it's expiring this Friday, which will be the 8th. So next Friday or next Thursday, they have earnings. So I'll probably wait a week and then I'll look at potentially doing another trade with them. Now, do they pay dividends? They do pay dividends. I mean, not awful. Um, it's a small amount, but they're paying only 17%. So the payout ratio is also very important. Can they maintain the dividends? And they can with such a low payout ratio. And then the five-year growth is very, very high, almost 12%. And then they've been growing dividends for six years. Probably they just started paying dividends about six years ago is what my guess is. 
So I, I do like to look at that. Now related to PE, I can come here <clears throat> and I can look at the PE and I can look at the same forward PE. So it's 2151, but in the sector, the sector median is nearly 24. So they're below the sector median. That's why they have a B. They also have PE gap. They're doing, um, they're, they're doing better. Meaning if this was 30 or 40, it wouldn't be doing as well. So overall, they're, they're not overvalued. Um, the worst is EV sales forward. Their, their sales, they're not a, a huge growth company, but they are growing. That's the next thing I like to look at. I like to look at growth. So growth isn't great, but it's also not, not terrible. Their, their revenue growth year over year is, is relatively small. The forward looking year over year is about five or six percent. So with, with a very big company and they are a very big company, it's not huge. They do have some nice diluted growth year over year earnings diluted growth. So not 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 great, but also, like I said, not not real bad. Next thing is profitability. How are they profit profitability wise? The reason I like to look at profitability so much is there's been some studies over the years in companies who have really high return on capital, return on equity, return on assets, typically outperform the market by a significant amount. I, there was a study, I think, 15 or 20 years ago, and any of the companies that had you know, over a 20 return on equity and usually in the teens for return on assets typically did quite well long term. And you can see here return on common equity is 43 I like anything over 30 or even over 20. It, a lot depends on the company. They may have more growth and because they're growing pretty rapidly, their return on common equity may be a little bit lower as they pay off more debt and they acquire more assets and capital. They typically, the ROE and ROA will go up. And then return on assets is 22. Again, I'm okay. I, I like to see at least in the teens. So 22 is, is very good. I also like to come down here and look at cash from operations and they're bringing in nearly almost six and a half or a little more than seven and a half billion in cash from operations, which is significant. It's, if you look at their sector, it's significantly higher than their sector. Um, if you wanted to look at their sector, you can click over here on information technology. You can actually look at the industry, the sector, the overall. So they're not, overpriced. They're very profitable. Um, just overall, a, a, a good company. Now, momentum, I don't really look at as much. This is more the momentum of the stock price. And I'm not sure. I I sometimes think I'm not a momentum player, but they have some momentum, not, not crazy momentum. You can also come over here, look at options to see how they look overall option wise. And they typically have quite a bit of option activity. Now, a lot of times I'll jump over into bar charts and I'll come and I'll look at them again over here. And what I like to look at is the interactive chart, which has the Bollinger Bands. And then I can get a feel, you know, what price would I like to look at? You can see their, their average is about 193. The top of the band is 219. Is that 219? I think that's 219. And the low is 171. I typically like to be below the low end of the band. So if I could, you know, make a trade right around maybe 170 or 165. And also I'd like to look at around a 15 delta. I can do that by coming down here to option prices. And I can see what a 15 delta is. I'll go out to, at this time, I like to do 1220. It's about... I think it's 48 days out. Yeah, 48 days. And then I here I can actually get, I don't want to look at calls, so I'm going to come down and look at puts. And then I'll look around for a 15 delta. Here's an 18 delta that's shaded. Right around 160, a 14.4 delta is 155. And you can see it has some pretty good premium. Anywhere from 250 to 260. If I looked at a 145, so I could potentially do a 155, 145 out in December. Again, am I going to make this trade right now? I'll probably wait after earnings just to be sure that there's no significant surprises. Um, now, if it goes in the money towards the end of the week, I may look at rolling it. It all depends on what happens with it. 
but I really like this. Um, so overall, I, I like applied materials. They typically have very good op options premium. Um, the other thing is I like to do here is I also like to look at most active options. And then during the day, sometimes I'll come in just to see what's going on, you know, who has the most volume or who's down with the most volumes. So like we can see Tesla was down on Friday. It's, it's Sunday. So um, this is from the market on Friday. Apple was also down quite a bit. MicroStrategy, uh, which doesn't make money. It's not one of the stocks I typically trade in currently. Advanced Micro de Devices, I do trade in it. I believe I have some puts on it around 140. But if you're not a member, you can get the top 25. If you are a member, you can keep going. You can keep going down and down and down. Um, the other thing I like to, to use is the option screener. It does a really nice job. So I can come here and I can say, this is a screen I set up and you have to do it to filter value. And then I typically like to do mid and I can see well, what, what companies, and a lot of times it is NVIDIA, it's uh, TSM, which is Taiwan Semiconductor, I believe. And what the screener looks like, I can see the filters, it's got return on equity. It's also got debt to equity, you know, how good um, the overall opinion strength is. This is more related to how they view or how bar, bar charts views it. So you can see there's quite a bit of information and you can modify this and change it. It's the only place I found where you can do this with option activity too. So I can say what kind of delta I want to use. I can say if it's a call or a put, I can also say how many days to expiration. And then even options volume and open interest, it, it gives you a lot of choices. So I, I really like that ab about um, bar charts. So overall, I, I like applied materials. I think long-term they're going to do well. And they're just a good company to trade options on currently. I don't own any, but I plan to own some, hopefully before the end of the year. So now let's jump in. We'll go a slightly different direction, and we're going to look at an ETF. So stay tuned. Let's jump in and look at one of my current ETFs that I like to trade. Okay, the next uh, thing I want to talk about is one of the ETFs that I currently like. I'm, I would like to trade QQQ, but I find XLK actually does as well as QQQ, and it's a little bit easier on the, you know, on your purse or on your capital required because it's two twenty three versus I think QQQ is like five or six hundred dollars. So here again, I can go out to ten years, and you can see it's it's steadily gone up, and it's done done quite well. Now, if you're not familiar with them, they're the technology select sector, so it is all technology. But over the last ten years, technology is just done really well. So it should be a part of your, your portfolio and it should be something you should look at trading on. And you can see it's got really good reviews and then it's got a good review from SA Analysts and Quant. What I forgot to show down here is there's also lots of stories. This is all news that's reported from Wall Street on the left. You've got um, information from each of the analysts and this is here for stocks and ETFs. So you can dig down a little bit deeper. You can see I also like to look at the comments to see what people are thinking. Um, it pays an okay dividend, not great. I believe it's, yeah, 0.7%, so a little bit lower than the median for ETFs. Uh, but if you're trading XLK, it's not typically the dividends. Expenses are relatively low, so it's 0.09%. The median is 0.49%, so I also like that, that it's fairly inexpensive. Risk is, is, it's up there. The risk is a little bit higher, again, because it's technology companies. Some of these companies have gotten quite pricey. One thing I really like to look at is holdings, and it also will give you other ideas. Any ETF, if you look at their holdings, you can get some ideas on some other potential investments. Now, this is, they have 72 holdings, but you can see these are the top holdings, NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft. Broadcom, Salesforce, Oracle, Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, Cisco, um, Accenture, Adobe. So some of the best. And that's typically what you find. And liquidity is quite high. So it's easy to get in and out. And the options are pretty significant. Um, 
and you can actually right back in bar chart you can also take a look at it xlk so let's look at xlk and we can look at options we can also look at the um, interactive chart for it too so you, you can see the bands have kind of thinned a little bit so again i i prefer to be below the lower band when i'm writing puts uh, but if you did something along the lines of the wheel, you might do something along, you know, the the 30-day or 20-day average. I believe the Bollinger Band is 20-day average. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But, uh, you know, if you're going to do the wheel, you might do closer to the to this middle band. I, with puts, again, I like to do 15 delta. So I'll again come down here. I prefer monthly. Some of you guys might prefer weeklies. Um, I don't know if they have weeklies. I think, yeah, they do have weeklies. So you can also do weeklies for them. At this point, I would look at 1220 again, because I, I prefer monthlies and I'll come down here and look at the puts again. I'm looking at around a, a 15 Delta. Now they, the, the Delta is a little bit more interesting. Now with ETS, I may take, or I typically take a little bit more risk. So I may go with a 20 Delta for them or, well, we have a 24 delta or 18 delta, so I might consider an 18 delta, which would be right around 205. If we look at them currently, they're 223, so 205 is pretty far out. And let's see, 205, I want to do 205, 195. So it's the spread isn't that good, um, but I've made trades on them before, and I have found it. It's partially because I believe they were, yeah, they were up, not huge, but the numbers, you can see the numbers were quite a bit down on Friday. Uh, but again, I might, I might take a little bit more risk. And if I was running the wheel, I may do, um, you know, more like 215, which would bring, bring in four to probably four to five hundred dollars, some, some, somewhere around there. And then, you know, if you looked at the call, so you, you sold the 215, I got assigned to you, then you could sell a 220 call up here which pays almost eleven or twelve hundred dollars. So I don't know. XLK may be another good choice for um, doing a wheel trade. I mean, their their call premium is is pretty impressive. You can see anywhere from eleven sixty to twelve twenty. So if it was assigned to you, and then the next month you you sold the covered call, you could potentially do pretty well. Now, if I come back over here, one thing I did want to share is you can see here's XLK compared to the S&P 500. Now, you can see it's done about the same in one year. Three years, it's done a bit better. Five years, it's outperformed. 86 for S&P, 164. Ten years, it's it's done even better. Now, if you go farther out, um, I mean, we, if we went out the max, it's not done as well as the S&P 500, but it's also because it didn't get started till I believe 20, what is that? That's 1999. So if we change this over here and we select 1999, hopefully this isn't boring you guys, but, and then we, I think I can select a, Uh, hold on, let me get it. Let's see if it did it. Looks like it did. So you can see it even outperformed. Well, it did not out. It outperformed since 1999. So you would have done a little bit better. What I like to do here is is add in IJR, which is one of my favorites too, and let's see how it compares. And you can see IJR, which is the orange, actually outperformed both since 1999. And IJR is, we can look at it. Let's open this. Just so I tell you correctly. And I've been trading with it for a long time. It's the iShares Core S&P Small Cap ETF. So it's healthier companies than what's in the typical Russell 2000. So it's, it's done 
it did it even better. So let's actually put the Russell 2000 in there and see how that compares. I like how it keeps that time frame. So here again, you can see IJR outperformed. And then here's IWM. Here's the S&P 500. Here's XLK. So of the three, IJR, which again is one of my favorites, you got like a 617% return. Now, another thing I typically like to do here is let's see what it looks like if I compare it to my Coke. And this is, was kind of surprising when I did this. It's here's Coke all the way down here. So you would have done a lot better trading the other. So Coke had a 96% return versus 617. Um, so Coke didn't do as well. Now let's look at maybe Home Depot would be a better alternative because I think I've told you guys before that when I compared Home Depot to Coca-Cola, Home Depot was significantly better. Did it take Coca-Cola again? Let's take, okay, so here's, here's Home Depot. So you can see Home Depot actually did better, 929%. So picking the right company, now you want to really be blown away? Let's, let's throw in one more. Let's leave Home Depot there. Let's, oops. Let's add Apple. I don't know why that's not showing me anything. Here we go. <laughs> it went nuts. You can't even compare it. I mean... So have, had you invested in Apple compared to everything else, Apple would have done really, you know, you would have outperformed so much more. So if you 57,000% return, so absolutely crazy. One more just out of curiosity's sake. Let's do Microsoft and see how it compares. So it's, it doesn't, 1,042, it's still outperformed, even Home Depot. Uh, but long story short, there aren't many companies like a Microsoft or like a Home Depot that have outperformed or an Apple who has just taken your, you know, your capital and just multiplied it uh, to an amazing factor. I find this interesting. Part of what I'm trying to share here isn't so much that you need to invest in Home Depot and Microsoft. But if you find the gym out there in companies, and I believe they were two of the ones that were in this study I found years ago related to <clears throat> um, having better profitability, a company that had over, I think it was 30, a 30 return on equity. And I believe Home Depot, Microsoft, Apple were, were some of those. They just outperformed the rest of the market. But then a majority of the companies, 80, 90, 95% were like what happened with um, with Coca-Cola. And if you put in some other names, like we could even put in, you know, something like Southern Company or, or Abbey V and some of those, it was a similar situation. So you can do better in a lot of cases with just going with the ETFs. You won't get the crazy returns. But it kind of lends itself to maybe stick to a few really good ETFs like IJR um, or XLK, you know, or like what Warren Buffett says, the S&P 500. He's going to, when he passes, he's going to leave a sum of money that's just going to be the S&P 500. And even though it has a small um, dividend, it, you know, when you put a hundred million dollars in there and it's a one, two, three percent, well, one or two percent dividend, you're still talking a lot of money for someone to live off of. So it's what I wanted to share with you, you guys. I mean, XLK is really good for trading options. IJR doesn't have as many um, expirations and open interest, but it's still good to trade with S&P 500, SPY and the IWM. Are good, and I also like trading on Home Depot. It it got a little pricey recently, but it's been coming down. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what you think. I typically respond to my comments fairly quickly. And again, if you want to take a look at my memberships, they've been growing. They've been coming very active, especially the Discord. 
um, some of the, the discussions we're having are really interesting. So thanks for joining me and taking the time to watch the video. And I look forward to uh, seeing you next time.